Hello, welcome to the channel. This week we are going to be talking all about Castello San Angelo, probably one of the most versatile and repurposed buildings of all time. A mausoleum, a fortress, papal apartments, a castle, a prison, a hiding place. Apparently a place where an archangel landed on earth to announce the end of the plague in Rome. Let's get into it. The mausoleum was built in Rome in, we think, around 123 to 139 AD, not as a fortress, a castle, even as an outpost for the Vatican popes, but as a burial ground. See, Castello San Angelo, or Castle of the Holy Angel in English, uh, was built by a, a Roman emperor. Hadrian. He's the same guy who rebuilt the Pantheon after its fiery destruction. Hadrian built what we know as the Castello San Angelo, not as a castle or anything like that, but as a mausoleum for himself and his family. He built it on the right-hand side of the mighty river Tiber, near to where one of his illustrious predecessors had their mausoleum built. Uh, that was Augustus. He is the other guy that originally built the Pantheon before it got destroyed. Originally, the mausoleum was just one 64-metre diameter cylinder of marble, bronze, gold, even had a lavish garden on top, as well as a huge statue of Hadrian riding a chariot. You see, Hadrian was a subscriber to the polytheistic pagan uh, religion in Rome at that time, which means that he believed in Jupiter, Mars, Neptune, and all of the uh, Greco-Roman gods. So when a sus subscriber to the Greco-Roman -Ro religion died, what would happen? They'd be cremated, they'd be burnt. So once they are cremated or burnt, they would have coins placed on them, sometimes on their eyes. And these coins would then be used to pay the ferryman to get over the river Styx and go into the afterlife. This happened to Hadrian when he died. So he was burned, cremated in his imperial palace in the Roman form and then taken up to his mausoleum. When they arrived at the mausoleum, he was taken up in a procession around the helical ramp that goes all the way around the mausoleum. Now, uh, he was then placed into a sarcophagus and you can go visit his sarcophagus uh, in his burial chamber today, even though he died nearly 2000 years ago. An interesting fact about this helical ramp is that in the 6th century it was sealed off because it was uh, vulnerable to attacks. And then nearly 1700 years after it was built, it was reopened in the 19th century. That's because they lost it. They didn't know where it was. They uh, knew that it was somewhere, but they couldn't find it. The mausoleum, which is only just 500 meters away from St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, uh, remained exactly that, a mausoleum, for nearly 300 years, that is, until we get to 403 AD. Another emperor decided to make sure that he would use it as a fortress to defend Rome. See, because the Castello is on the other side of the Tiber, he thought it would be a good place to defend Rome. We then fast forward nearly 200 years to 590 AD, where we see Rome being distraught by the plague. I wonder what that feels like. By now, Christianity had grown in its influence and it had the Vatican, its base. And so a papal pope, uh, Pope Gregory I, organized a procession to try and get rid of the, the plague, where he had a, a vision of an angel, the archangel Michael, stabbing um, Hadrian's mole, his mausoleum, to get rid of the, the, the plague at that time. This was then uh, decided to be a miracle and was a divine sign. And so the Romans decided to stop calling uh, this building Hadrian's Mausoleum and then decided to call it Castello Sant'Angelo, which is still the name that we use today. Now, if you go to the uh, Castello Sant'Angelo, you will see an angel on top. And that is the angel um, 
of the Archangel of Michael, who's sheathing his sword. He's putting away his sword after he has stabbed it. And apparently on top of the castle, there's a round uh, circular stone that was where the Archangel stood. When the castle became part of the uh, papal properties, Pope Nicholas III decided to build the Passetto di Borgo. Um, and this is just a big passageway. It's an 800 meter long passageway and he built it in 1277 AD. It's that big passageway that uh, was used in Dan Brown's books, Angels and Demons, uh, and they made a film out of it as well uh, with Tom Hanks. You see, as the Vatican uh, grew in its power and influence, the popes decided that it needed more protection, even in their own lands. And we know of two occasions when this passageway was used to uh, protect the popes because they were endangered. They used it to run from uh, St. Peter's Basilica and the Papal Palace to the fortress of um, San Angelo. The first was in 1494 when Pope Alexander VI used it to escape from um, a Christian king, of all things, uh, Charles VII of France, who decided that he wanted more territory and he invaded into the northern Italian states. So the Pope was a little bit worried that having another king so close to the Papal States would influence would have influence over the Papal States. So this, of course, grew with tension and there was a little bit of a war between these two people. Of course, uh, Charles VII then went on to be uh, crowned King of Naples, Napoli. Another Pope that used the passageway to escape danger was Clement VII in 1527, when probably the most powerful man in history, apart from maybe Charlemagne, uh, decided to sack Rome. Charles V of that one dynasty called Habsburg. And the Archduke of Austria, King of Italy, King of Germany, uh, King of Spain, Count of Flanders, he allowed the Spanish conquest of the Aztec and the Incan empires, uh, he used the conquistadors and Andertes, uh, he went looking for El Dorado, uh, he outlawed Martin Luther at the Diet of the Worms, he, um, along with his army, executed most of the Swiss Guard uh, on the steps of St. Peter's Basilica, uh, who were trying to protect the Pope at the time. That's why he ran to uh, the castle. You know that one, that one Charles V? Yeah, him, that one. Funny enough, by 1530, he was actually crowned, Charles V that is, he was actually crowned the Holy Roman Emperor, which was not so holy, not so Roman, and not really an empire, if we're honest. And he was crowned by the guy who ran away from him, Clement VII. Throughout this time, Castello San Angelo slowly started turning into more of a fortress. It housed uh, the Vatican uh, treasury, the papal archives. It was even used as a prison to imprison heretics, guys like uh, Giorgio Bruno, um, who was a scientist, and the artist uh, Benvenuto Cellini. By the time the Renaissance came along, the popes had used, or well, were using, uh, the castle as papal apartments. They decorated it lavishly, such as Leo X, uh, who used Raffaele di Mon. Lupo, uh, to create the big chapel in uh, side of the castle called Madonna. When Italy was finally unified in 1871 um, to become its own kingdom, the castle was then given to the king, Vittorio Emmanuel II, and his government, who used it as a fortress all the way up until 1901, which was then decommissioned and became a museum. Today you can go and visit the museum. It has seven layers that you can go and visit. You can see the battlements, the armor used, the weaponry, all used to defend Rome and the Vatican itself. Funny enough, there's a bar on top of it. You can go have a glass of wine um, near the top of the castle. And if you go to the top of the castle, you'll be greeted with a 360 degree view of Rome where you'll be able to see St. Peter's Basilica, Baroque architecture, the altar of the fatherland, the Pantheon, and much, much more. See, a lot of people, when they go and visit Castello San Angelo, are sometimes left a little bit underwhelmed by the interior because the exterior is so grand. But one has to realize that this is history. Throughout history, many buildings have lost their amazing facades and their original facades through theft, destruction, wars, and whatnot. But this is an example of time. 
because it went on for so long and it's still being used today as a museum, time has taken away most of the facade. We have a lot of it left, but time has reduced um, the castle to what it is today. I do suggest you go and view it because there are some amazing things you can see in it. If you haven't already, please comment, like, subscribe, all the rest. I've also made a video all about the Pantheon, uh, which Hadrian built. This is mausoleum, so if you like this video, I'm sure you'll like that one as well. Um, thank you very much for watching my video. Have a great day, and the more you know.